Hey, good morning all my fellow amateur astronomers and backyard astronomers alike. This is Kokakis762 with 554R coming at you live with another review. Actually, my first review, uh, a, a shot from the hip review on my Mead LX98 inch Schmidt Cassegrain or SCT for short. And this particular model I have for you is equipped with the uh, enhanced multi coatings. Okay, this is actually the pre-runner to the, uh, the UHTC or the ultra high transmission coatings that Mead is now utilizing on all their uh, all their optical tube assemblies and their telescope assemblies in general. So we're gonna go in, go ahead and get going here, and we're gonna get into a quick little uh, review of the uh, eight inch that I currently own and uh, use for astrophotography. So we got eight inches of aperture. This is the Mead Focal Ten. This is a Schmidt Cassegrain. The diameter of the main mirror is uh, 203.2 millimeter, and the focal length is 2,000 millimeters. That's the stock configuration. Okay, as you see from the uh, reflection in the uh, camera, we get the primary mirror in the back, and naturally, anybody who knows a Schmidt Cassegrain, here is your secondary mirror. This is your secondary mirror housing. Okay. I've owned this telescope for about five years now. I'm the third owner of this telescope. The previous owners of this telescope, I believe, according to what my buddy told me, was a man and a woman, a husband and wife. Uh, the wife apparently bought this telescope for her husband for a birthday present because he showed the, uh, the uh, uh, need to get into amateur astronomy and maybe astrophotography. Uh, apparently it never panned out. He never really got into it, so it just kind of sat in a bedroom and they eventually put it up on Craigslist and my buddy Tony bought this telescope uh, for I think it was like 600 bucks and I found it a couple months later when we were talking about need I need me needing a telescope and he sold it to me for four hundred dollars so basically for the price of four hundred big ones I got a very lightly used LX90 EMC 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope setup okay uh, this particular telescope was made in 2002 and uh, this telescope, a very interesting and unique feature of this telescope was it was probably one of the last ones made in Arvine, California at Meade's plant at the time. As everybody knows who has Meade's or is interested in Meade instruments, all their primary manufacturing is either done in China or their new plant down in Mexico right now. So it's actually kind of cool that I actually still have a telescope that was made in the good old United States. It's kind of hard to find a lot of things made in the U.S. anymore. It's just the way it is. It is what it is. Nothing you can do about it. So what else can I show you on this telescope? Well, I mean, right now we're in alt-as mode, as you can kind of see from the video here. Okay, this the LX90 models um, are capable of performing both in alt-as mode, which is basically what we are in right now, and they can also perform in polar mode. Uh, Alt as mode is primarily the uh, configuration you use for just casual observing, and you are capable of doing some astrophotography in alt as mode as well. Um, you can go about 5.2 minutes per exposure in alt as mode before you start noticing star trails, uh, field rotation, and stuff of that nature. Um, the only way to get away from all that kind of uh, astrophotography gremlins as I like to call them is that you have to deploy a wedge which we have right here. I'm going to put that up on the couch here. This right here is the standard wedge that Mead offers for all the uh, the uh, for the LX90 models basically the 8 to 10 inch models. Uh, just a quick note if you are a owner of a 10 inch or larger LX90 uh, I would recommend that you do not use the standard wedge because your telescope will be way too heavy for this setup, this particular wedge, and it will dance all over the place and you will not be able to, um, you'll get the shakes, you won't be able to get very good images because your telescope will be dancing all over the wedge. Uh, for a telescope LX90 or LX200 bigger than 8 inches in diameter, I recommend you use the uh, Meads Ultra Wedge or their Max Wedge, which is their newest wedge right now. Down here is the plate that came with my wedge, and this is the adapter plate for the LX90 telescope that enables me to go ahead and bolt this up to the base of the telescope, which allows it to sit on the wedge the way it needs to. So I can go ahead and use the bolts that go ahead and attach it to the wedge itself. Okay, This little bolt right here, yeah, look, there's a quarter. See, money does fall from telescopes. 
Uh, this bolt right here goes right through the base of this into the base of the telescope base itself, and that's how you set up that wedge. Okay, just a quick little thing on the wedge. So anyway, right now my telescope is currently in alt as mode for the demonstration of this review. And uh, primarily this is most of the time how I use it at the house, unless I'm going to a dark sky site, then I'll kick it over into polar mode. But other than that, it runs perfectly fine the way it is. The telescope is sitting on a, a Mead giant field tripod. Now a lot of people wonder why I have only an 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain mounted to a gigantic field tripod from Mead. Well, a couple reasons. One, I was able to acquire this beautiful tripod, this huge tank behemoth of a tripod, for about 350 bucks off a buddy in Mesa who was selling it. Uh, these giant field tripods go for about $750 brand new off Mead's website. So I was able to acquire a used one in good condition for about 350 bucks. The reason I did that was for two reasons. This tripod is rock solid. It's got huge legs, huge fasteners, huge adjusters. It is heavy. It's going to hold. It's not going to move. As a matter of fact, case in point, I've actually tripped on this tripod in the desert when I'm doing my imaging. And surprisingly, to my shock, I didn't notice any kind of um, imaging issues. As a matter of fact, the telescope held its alignment and it, it, the telescope itself remained level. So the tripod, yes, it is overkill for this particular size telescope, but for stability, it, 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 the only thing better would be a pier, and I don't have a pier right now, so we can't do that. Okay. And the last point of the way, of the uh, the giant field tripod, in about six months, I plan on getting a Mead LX90 12 inch or perhaps an LX200 12 inch. So I'm gonna need a tripod that is going to go ahead and support the weight. The only tripods they are shipping with now are the standard field tripods, and I need something a little bit more heavy duty to hold that 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 big of a telescope. On top of my 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain, I have an Orion Short Tube 80 millimeter Acromat reflector, and basically I, uh, I'm sorry, refractor. I think I just said reflector. Scratch that. It's a refractor. Uh, basically, what I use this little guy for is an auxiliary spotting scope when I am imaging through the main diagonal here with my CCD imager. Um, it, it it works as a fun little. It's a focal five. So it works really good for taking some snapshots of star clusters and just getting a real quick shot of something when I don't want to set up a wedge. And like I said, it helps aid in targeting my uh, my uh, star or my deep uh, deep sky object for the camera while the camera is placed into the uh, diagonal. So this helps really well. Okay, I have an eight by fifty millimeter uh, star finder on the side here. This is my little finder scope which mounts right up right here with these little guys, kind of hard to see in the light. Let me turn this this way. Everything's black on a mead. So this tightens up right here. I've got my little adjusters here. It's illuminated with a polar reticle, which helps me uh, polar align the telescope when it's in the polar mode. On the front of the telescope itself, let me turn it this way. On the front of the telescope itself, I have Bob's knobs. Let me turn that into the light. I have a set of Bob's knobs right here, one, two, and three, and this enables me to do fine adjustments by hand of the critical secondary mirror collimation when I'm in the field and I just don't really feel comfortable taking an Allen wrench next to my corrector plate. Okay, so that's not, that's good. I like Bob's knobs. You can get those and they're pretty cheap. Okay. So all in all, it's a pretty good working little telescope. I decided to replace the stock 1.25 uh, inch Mead diagonal, which was their standard diagonal, with a pro optic dielectric coated two inch diagonal, which enables me not only to use 1.25 inch eyepieces, but I can also utilize a two inch eyepiece once I take the adapter out. So I get to kill two birds with one stone. And I actually have a 56 millimeter Mead eyepiece, which is huge. And uh, we'll pull that out in another, uh, I'll be showing that when I do the review on my eyepieces. On the bottom of the telescope, I have Mead's um, weight system, the counterbalancing system right here. There you go. you got a good view of it right here. It's basically a bar that screws in to the pre-existing holes on your, your OTA. And this enables me to go ahead and counterbalance the 80 millimeter refractor on top along with the 8x50 viewfinder and the 2-inch diagonal in the back. 
all three of these components add a lot of weight to the top of this telescope and the back of it. So you, may, you always want to make sure that you balance your telescope as best you can if you want accurate slewing and targeting. Okay. Another thing I did on my telescope, I went ahead and switched out the uh, AutoStar, the 497 AutoStar, with the new AudioStar hand controller from Mead Instruments. And I, I do like this this uh, this hand controller a lot more than the 497, which is over here on my LXD75 mount. The 497 is still a very versatile hand controller and computer system. However, Mead kind of listened to their customers, and they kind of came out with the AudioStar, which is a refined version of the 497. It's not the AutoStar 2. That's still a better system than this one. Uh, but the, the audio stars are no slouch. It has refined computer components in there. It has uh, refined targets in the palm of your hand right here. It also has a voice program so you can hear uh, detailed descriptions of the target you're looking at, whether it be the moon, uh, the planets, uh, deep sky like a galaxy, a star cluster, a nebula, anything like that. There's all kinds of information that come out of this little speaker in the back basically telling you all kinds of stuff about your target. This thing is a rave at star parties I've gone to. Little kids love coming up to me and my telescope because the telescope, the, the controller talks to them. And it really gives everybody a lot of information. So it's a really good learning aid and tool for this telescope. And everybody who owns a Mead probably knows about the AudioStar. I'm sure many of you watching this review right now probably have a Mead and you have the AudioStar. And actually, you know what, I'll go ahead and uh, let's, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. I'll tell you what I'll do here. Let's just go ahead and just do a quick little, we'll do a quick little alignment real quick. So you can hear the telescope. And there she goes. Right now I have quite slew off just so it moves quick and you can hear the telescope go. And she's going pretty good. Okay, right now, like I said, we're doing a demonstration, so it's probably not accurate, but okay, we're looking at Arcturus. We're pretending. Okay, we got it. Let's let, let's go to Arcturus. Right now, the telescope's going through a predefined uh, two-star uh, uh, alignment procedure. We're gonna go ahead and let it do that real quick. Still going. Round and round she goes to Altair. There she goes. Okay, so now the telescope thinks it's looking at Altair. We'll let it. We'll let it continue to think that for the demonstration. And press enter. Alignment successful. So basically, right here, the alignment procedure is pretty much identical to the 497 Auto Star, which is on my mount right there. However, this one's a little bit more refined. It gives you a little bit more options to fine tune your alignment, which is really, really, really cool. Okay, so let's go ahead. I want you guys to hear the. Um, I want you guys to hear the audio star, so let me go to the star we're on, and let me see if you can hear this. It's going to slew, and yeah, maybe she's not going to talk to me. Maybe altar is not important. Let's go back, hang on, hang on, we just got to find a better target. Solar system. Let's go Jupiter. There it goes. The planet Jupiter. The listener here real quick, it's gonna tell me about Jupiter. Okay, enough of that. I would sit here and let it play for about five minutes for the review, but it takes too long. So, all in all, in conclusion, let's talk about it. Let's, let, this is my conclusion about this telescope. The Mead LX90. The Mead LX90 is a very, very well-built telescope, okay? The EMC coatings on this telescope, although they are old, um, they still perform admirably. I don't ever have any issues with them, as opposed to uh, UHTC. I wish I did have this telescope with UHTC on it. However, it just didn't work out that way. Perhaps when I do get my 12-inch LX90, uh, I will have the UHTC on that, and I'll definitely be able to... Uh, enjoy the benefits of those coatings but uh, for the most part in conclusion uh, ladies and gents if, if you're thinking about getting an LX90 this is an older model uh, but you know the newer models are, are really really well and there's there's no problem with these telescopes at all 
I would highly recommend, highly recommend uh, a, a, an LX90 to any of my fellow stargazers, any of my friends. As a matter of fact, I've actually been able to sell the ideas of the LX90 to a lot of stargazers. And they've gone ahead and went ahead and picked them up. So, in conclusion, go ahead and pick one of these up. If you have not already or you're interested in LX90 or an LX200, these telescopes are really, really good. They're really, really they're built really they're built really well, and they track very well. The computer software is accurate, and they're outstanding for learning how to image on. So anyway, this is a quick little uh, snap from the hip review on my LX90. Um, I will do a more in depth uh, here in a couple weeks or maybe a couple days. I'll do a more in depth review on the LX90 as opposed to my LXD75 setup with the Orion reflector on top. These are totally two different uh, uh, systems as far as observing goes and, and imaging, but uh, we'll definitely take a review on that later on in time. So anyway, this is Skokakis 762x54R saying clear skies and uh, happy hunting with your, uh, your stars.